It's been a while since I started production of this video. This was actually a long, tiresome trip. You can tell by how tired and unshaven I look. But as a follow-up to my old video about the end of Gundam Front, I had traveled to Japan to shoot a video about the brand new Gundam base that replaced it. Unfortunately, I never had time to edit the video until now, so some of the footage is from a few years ago. But here is my experience. This was originally shot way back in December of 2017, but not much has changed about the Gundam base since then. I returned eight months later to shoot some pickups and again in 2020. The only major difference was the crowd size had doubled, uh, later it halved, and then the layout of some of the shops changed slightly. Outside Diver City. Gundam Base, as was Gundam Front, is located in Odaiba, Tokyo. More specifically, it's located on the upper floor of Diver City Mall. You know, the giant building with the huge robot in front of it? If you saw the Olympics, it was that big transformer everyone was talking about during the bike thing and then also the climbing thing. Anyway, back in 2017, when I arrived at Diver City, I was greeted by the view of many human-sized mobile suits for a Gundam Dock special event. These statues were placed all around the mall, as were many other little exhibits, which I'll explain later. The first major change to Gundam Base is the Unicorn Gundam statue. We said farewell to the RX-78-2 in the previous installation of this video series, and in place of it stands its descendant, the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam. I didn't think anything in Gundam lore could be as iconic as the original, but the Unicorn is a proud piece. It's very detailed, it partially transforms, and it looks stunning on a clear day. Shots like this really make me remember what it was like to see the show for the first time when I was a kid and have it just rip open my imagination for what was possible. Just for a moment, my imagination, what I think could be possible, breaks through to reality. Keep in mind the old Gundam could move its head, but that was pretty much it. This footage was shot later in August, but on some days you're even allowed to walk under the statue and admire the details of its construction up close. inside Diver City Mall. As I said, today was part of a special Gundam Docks promotional event, so the entire mall was filled with Gundam posters, exhibits, and merchandise. At each interior exhibit, marked on a map, you can get a card and a stamp, and if you get a stamp at each location on the map, you can redeem your stamp card and get a little free gift for your trouble. After taking pictures of all the exhibits and marking my card, I went upstairs to redeem my little prize. Mine was a smartphone screen wiper thing that sticks to your phone when not in use as I, for some reason, demonstrated on my ancient Galaxy One. Uh, it still works. Inside Gundam Base. Once I was all the way upstairs, I went into the completely renovated Gundam Base space. I noticed immediately that the ticket counters were gone. And it looked like the old museum and exhibit area was gone as well. Just about everything, actually, was gone. The entire space is now used for Gundam merchandise history exhibits. A new Gunpla factory space was opened. Strict G has a much cleaner layout. And the rest of the space is basically a gigantic Gunpla warehouse. I mean, if you want to buy Gunpla, look no further. 
I think they have every single model. Much to my delight, they had retained the Gunpla Builders World Cup entries exhibits, and this was a new class I hadn't seen yet. Good work, everybody. Every year, I'm blown away. I have a ton of pictures and videos of all these entries, so if you want to see those, check out the card on YouTube or look in the description. It's probably going to be the next recommended video to see the sort of chill out video gallery of all of the extra stuff that can't possibly fit in this video. It's much too long. Moving on to the Gunpla Factory. The Gunpla Factory area is really different. It's way bigger and now features a scale model of the actual Gunpla Factory, as well as a TV that shows a mini documentary on how Gunpla are manufactured. The space overall is much more organized and open than it once was, but I can't help but think it lost a little bit of its charm. Unfortunately, the life-size core fighter and a lot of the other stuff I really loved about the old Gundam front is completely gone and replaced by walking space and stacks of gunpla boxes. The character of this place is definitely more about selling you stuff than selling you a spectacle or an experience. But then again, the space is now free to enter. You're no longer paying for a fan experience. You're getting a big store display encouraging you to purchase things you probably already want to purchase. When I visited, I had just caught the release. I believe it was within a day of the S Gundam Deep Striker, which is the hugest thing ever. It was big and stupid and I wanted it. Uh, at the time, this would have been almost a scoop on the footage, uh, but my laziness. Uh, no one has seen this until four years later. I had like a full video of it within 24 hours, but you know. Uh, after reflecting on how different everything was, I decided I wanted to just grab some snacks and head back outside to the Gundam Cafe where I purchased a few things. I hadn't filmed the Gundam Cafe before, and I didn't film it again, because at the time it had gone unchanged. But I think eventually I will try to make some kind of video going through there again, so uh, be sure to check back in in a decade. Outside Gundam Base at night. Night is the best. Wow. I was blown away by how great the Unicorn Gundam looks at night. It's got a full light show. It's hard for me to really put it into words. Yes, it's just a TV show. Well, it, a TV show in an expanded universe of books, movies, and video games and plastic models, but it is just a nerdy hobby thing. When you can see one of these life-size Gundams in person, it changes, especially when you grow up with the franchise, but a franchise always at arm's length. The shows came out, but later, or only subtitled, or only in a foreign language. It aired on TV in America, but only some of it. And one of the shows was cancelled early before it could even finish. It sold products in stores, but only for about two years before taking a decade hiatus. Coming here brings it close. It makes it real, if only when you squint your eyes in the dark. That, I think, is more than enough, and I'm glad for it. I guess it really started with watching this weird show about giant robots when I was a kid. I probably wouldn't have ended up here without that catching my interest, making me curious about Japan and the future. I never knew that Japan was in my future, but it was. <laughs> 